My land has been targeted for this frack gas pipeline, an energy project that is not needed and in fact could be the financial ruination for many whose land it may cross. We have been here before. In 1976, I first visited Western Massachusetts where I witnessed a group of 14 individuals placing their bodies on the railroad tracks in an attempt to stop the shipment of the containment vessel bound for the Seabrook Nuclear Power Station. It is my sincere hope and intention that the work we are doing today will make that level of civil disobedience unnecessary. Here, here. But we are facing an industry that cares little for the way we think and feel and wish to live our lives. They cannot see the beauty of the land, they cannot smell the sweetness of the air, and they cannot understand why these things are important and necessary. This frack gas transmission pipeline that Kinder Morgan has cajoled Nesco and the Department of Public Utilities into supporting based on reports that are so biased toward fossil fuels, you'd think they were written by the industry themselves is nothing but a 176 mile high pressure bomb lying three feet below the ground. And to add insult to likely injury, they want everyone in Massachusetts to pay for this pipeline by putting a tariff on our electric bill. They want to run this pipeline through some of the most beautiful and pristine forests and farmlands because the population density allows them to use the least expensive and weakest pipe design, further increasing the risk of injury and death from explosion. And it is hard to ignore the reports of gas pipeline explosions that are occurring on almost a daily basis. Running this pipeline through our beautiful countryside also allows them to build 20-acre compression stations that run 24-7, spewing out toxic emissions from burning gas that is laced with fracking chemicals and radon, that are lit up with high-intensity lights all night long, and that release copious amounts of gas through leakage and even worse, through deliberate venting when the pipeline overpressurizes, forcing the evacuation of nearby homes and farms. And for what? to provide cheap energy to heat our homes and run the lights? When has that ever happened? Ooh. No, that is not their intention or their motivation. What they want is to export this as liquefied natural gas to the European and Asian markets because they will pay more, much more, for the gas and that will drive the price up for us here. We are already seeing legislation on the national level aimed at fast-tracking the permitting process for export LNG terminals. The Canaport LNG facility in St. Louis is already operational and they have just granted a permit for the one in Nova Scotia. Cove Point in Maryland is in the process as well. This is the kind of profit-oriented, non-empathic, thinking that we are up against. But people like Richard Kinder and his buddies who fled from Enron can be stopped. Up until now they have been able to get whatever they wanted, but they are now beginning to realize that things are going to be different. And here is why. Members of this coalition have given presentations in almost every town along the proposed pipeline route. We have met with landowners, select boards, boards of health, and our legislators. We have crafted resolutions both against the pipeline and in support of community rights. As a result of our efforts, 65% of landowners, including town-owned lands, have refused permission to survey. 20 communities, some of which are not even on the pipeline route, have passed resolutions either oppose the pipeline or to support community rights, and in one town they voted for both.
As a result of this bipartisan rejection of Kinder Morgan and their self-serving plans, these towns are now talking to each other about forming a coalition of towns to oppose the pipeline. Yes. Hey, hey. Yeah. Those of you who walk today and in the days ahead are ambassadors bringing a much needed message, message of hope to a world that desperately needs to hear it. It is a message of fearless determination, of clean air free of toxic emissions, of safety where we don't live in fear of one day having our homes, our children, and our livelihoods obliterated by an exploding pipeline incinerating everything in an area the size of a football stadium. You bring a new way of thinking and of seeing the world, not as a store of wealth that we can plunder any time we want, but as a community of people who want to work together to share ideas on ways to genuinely improve the lives of everyone in the community. You know that solar energy is not just viable, but proven. Some of you have made the investment to put solar panels on your home. For you, there is no question. In Germany, they have invested so heavily in solar that by 2050, they could be close to 100% solar capacity. So we are going to put an end to this foolishness. We are going to drake it and on to the State House where our legislators, the group of 18, are waiting to receive the petition signatures telling them that the people have spoken and our words are clear and unmistakable. Massachusetts needs the governor of this state to stop listening to the likes of Kinder Morgan and start listening to the people who live in this commonwealth. Yeah. Yeah. Massachusetts does not need this horrific pipeline and it will be a disgrace to his legacy as governor if he does not stand up to Kinder Morgan and tell them that we will not allow this pipeline to be constructed. Thank you very much. Okay, first of all, thank you so much to all of you for coming out today. This is great, and it gives me the huge opportunity to tell you what we want from you. Um, I'm from Berkshire Environmental Action Team, so we take action, but we will try to get everybody else to take action, which I think is what today is all about. Jim's already told you pretty much everything about the pipeline. The one thing I don't remember him mentioning is this fracked gas is primarily methane, which is about 86 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide in the 20 year time frame. So this is a really big deal for our planet. So what we'd like to have everyone do and get all your friends and neighbors to do is start out by asking the governor to withdraw his support for that tariff, the tax that would go on all the electric rate payers. And there's a uh, couple pages in back on the table that has these asks as well as all the addresses, not only for the governor, but all the gubernatorial candidates and then the senators and the representatives as well. So first thing this week, talk to the governor. We don't want the tariff. He has said in the beginning when this pipeline was coming through that, oh, isn't this great? We're going to have a pipeline. Now he's backed off to, oh, there's nothing I can do. It's a federal issue. Let him know. Stopping the tariff is what he can do. Then, could you ask your state legislators, your senator and representative, first of all, to hold hearings on the New England States Committee on Electricity, or NESCO, the group that put together the research for saying that we need this pipeline. This group is primarily oil, gas, and electric industry. We, the people, haven't had a say in this. If they're proposing a tariff to tax us, this is taxation without representation. Conservation Law Foundation did a great brief on why this organization 
is somehow outside of our governmental system. They refuse to answer Freedom of Information Act requests. If we don't have the information on how they did this, how do we know they did it fairly? So let's call on our legislators to hold hearings on NESCO. Also, we want to request a study to look at the low demand scenario. When NESCO came out with, we need this pipeline, they also said under the low demand scenario where energy efficiency and renewables really do a good job of lowering our electric usage, we do not need new long-term infrastructure like the pipeline. But it says right in their own study, we didn't look at the costs and benefits of creating the low demand scenario. So let's look at the costs and benefits of creating the low demand scenario. Ask your legislators. And most importantly, ask your legislators to oppose releasing state protected land, which is protected under Article 97 of our Constitution. To build this pipeline, they have to go through that land. It takes a two-thirds vote of both the House and the Senate to release it. And if our legislators will all pledge not to release that land, we'll be throwing up a huge obstacle to this pipeline. So, four things for you to do. Contact the governor, stop the tariff. Contact your legislators to hold a hearing on NESCO, require a study of the low demand scenario, and don't release Article 97 lands. So, hopefully every one of you will do that. The other thing I want to say is thank you so much to everybody who's going to be going out and walking today and for the organizers of the day. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, there's two other proposed pipelines, you may know, running north-south uh, from Pen Pennsylvania Fracked Fields to this little town called Wright, New York, which you may again know is a compression station or a hub for various other pipelines. And this proposed pipeline, the east-west one that we're dealing with, begins in Wright, New York. So uh, we are in touch with the, that other group called Stop the Pipeline as well. Uh, so what's leading up to, and I'm hoping we can firm this up this week, is a uh, coalition of the New York and Massachusetts groups because it's all grassroots, very little money behind us, uh, very little notice to fight this, I call it the behemoth or a freight train that's trying to run through our, our towns. And uh, we got a big job ahead of us, I think we all know it, but um, the, the, this ruling by the New York Supreme Court is significant and it basically they've said you can as a town you can ban fracking so I'm hoping that the extension of that is, is that we can ban the pipelines the hell with them this pipeline is going to affect a lot of private landowners uh, just like all of us um, whose property is going to be directly impacted but it's also affecting uh, private far uh, farmers apple orchards uh, dairy farms uh, organic vegetable farms and such. In my town of Pepperell, the pipeline will cross the last uh, operating dairy farm. And they're a small family farm. They have about 75 to 90 cows. So they're sort of struggling to get by a bit. And the pipeline is going to bisect their property. Uh, there'll be a hundred foot right away, uh, right through their hay fields and their corn fields. And you never know. I mean, they, you know, I hate to say it could be the end for that farm, but it's going to, you know, it's going to, they're going to struggle going forward. So later on, when we send Melanie and the Richmond Walkers on their way, they're going to um, be the first folks in the state to carry uh, some items that are going to go from west to east. One of them will be the Stop the Pipeline banner that's behind us right now. So hopefully they will, a couple people will lead, lead the march uh, with the pipeline banner in front. Right over here uh, is the infamous pipeline pipe. And the 
So the petitions that we're collecting along the way, we're going to carry this across the state, and at the end, on July 30th, we're going to hand it to Deval Patrick, hopefully, or someone in the, in the state house, one of the legislators, and it's going to hopefully have uh, several thousand signed petitions against the pipeline. So I'm going to hand this to Melanie right now. And then lastly, and again, this is going back to the farming theme, we have uh, three cowbells that we'd like the, uh, the marchers to make a little noise as they go along. And it's sort of, you know, keeping with the Preserve Our Farms theme that we're talking about today. So we're going to turn those over to you, Melanie, and uh, have a wonderful walk. And I'm telling you, Richmond is setting a very high standard, a, a very high bar to follow for the other towns. I will say there's good energy all over the state. But this is uh, truly a special event. So thank you, Melanie, for organizing. Thank you, Arnie.